Okay, to begin your color wheel, you're gonna to need to get your three primary colors. Um, there are several different kinds of yellow, kinds of red, and kinds of blue. And so there's different hues. So we're gonna be using from Blick Acrylics as well as um, Liquitex Basics. We're gonna be using the primary yellow, the primary red, and then ultramarine blue. But we could swap out for like alizarin crimson or a cadmium yellow and get a very similar effect. Different kinds of yellows and reds are gonna make different kinds of oranges. As well as when we use different reds and different blues, we're gonna get different kinds of violets. If a red has a lot of orange in it, sometimes the violet starts to look a little brown. So I chose these two colors. We'll explore um, how to mix colors later, and we'll explore um, how to make the different colors um, using different kinds of primaries. But today we're just gonna focus on mixing the color wheel. So first things first is you're gonna take your Masterson um, palette and you're gonna put a piece of gray matter palette paper underneath. And so we use this palette paper to keep our palettes nice and clean. You do have to clean them um, periodically and they're kind of a pain in the butt to clean. So we wanna keep them as clean as possible, unlike me who got paint all over mine. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna squirt probably about a quarter size amount. So like the quarter, the coin, the quarter, quarter. And you're gonna go ahead and squeeze out your three colors. And what I like to do is line them up on my palette and give them some space. And then I like to use this big area for the mixing of my color. Acrylics dry fast. And so what I like to do is take a damp paper towel. This is just one piece of paper towel. I put it in water, I wrung it out, and then I just set it in the corner. When we put the lid on at the end of class and we seal it up really, really well by getting all the snaps, right? We got all the snaps and we wanna make sure they're nice and straight. If one of them is up, it means air is getting in. Um, by putting that piece of paper towel inside the palette, we're gonna create humidity and that will make the paints last longer and longer. I find that if I do it this way, sometimes my paints will last for up to a week, which does not happen at all. If I left this out um, without a lid, these would dry up in a couple of hours. Um, especially like on the outside. You might have some on the inside that you could kind of peel back and use, but it makes it kind of difficult. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm gonna mix, put my palette over here so you can see it on the screen. This is what we're gonna do. So you have a handout, or if you are at home, you'll be drawing out your color wheel on a uh, piece of paper. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the colors in the order that we have here. So we're gonna put our primary colors in this triangle that says primary colors. And then we're gonna mix our secondary colors and mix our tertiary or intermediate colors. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm not gonna paint the whole color wheel. I'm actually gonna just do the yellows, um, oranges and reds, and then you can figure out how you're going to mix the greens and the violets. Okay, so first things first is gonna go ahead and pick a brush. So in your sets, you were given this Princeton set and you were given a palette knife and a fan brush. So you have to decide which kind of brush is gonna work best. For me, these are kind of big shapes, so I don't wanna use an itty bitty little brush, right? That's gonna take forever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this number four flat. Mine's looking a little beat up. I've used it year after year and I've used this with some oil as well. And so this is the one that's in your set. Notice how the bristles are flat across, not rounded, right? So you're gonna go ahead and grab that. And all I want you to do is to load up the paintbrush. So to load up the paintbrush, you don't wanna jab it into that. You put a little bit of paint on both sides of the brush and notice how I haven't coated all of the bristles. And so the flat will make a nice clean edge as you pull it around. And I do care about craftsmanship. You need to be able to practice how to paint a straight line or how to make a clean line. And so I do want you to stay in the lines as best as possible. And when it starts to like see the canvas paper underneath. That means you need to load up more paint. 
You shouldn't see streaks of thick paint. You need to have a nice flat layer. Now, the reason I don't want to see thick streaks of paint is because a lot of times with acrylics, we do like a base layer or a base color first, and then we put detail on top. So if you have lots of bumps, your details on the top um, might be harder to paint. So you probably want to do at least two layers of color. You're going to find that a lot of the colors with yellow in them are very transparent. That means you can see through them. So you might see the paper through. So I did two layers. If it's damp outside, you might need to let it dry before you do a second coat. So I'm going to go ahead into my water cup. Notice how I'm just using a plain plastic water cup. I'm going to swish it around, right, to clean out the bristles. I'm going to wipe off some of the water, and then I'm going to dry it off on my paper towel. If I have any color left, I'm going to have to go back in here and clean it some more. We don't want any paint left in the bristles. So dry off the bristles as best as you can and go ahead and load up the bristles just like before. Don't add too much and you're going to go ahead and fill in the red. So here you can see what's happening when you don't have a lot on the bristles. All right, so try to paint in a straight line. Okay, load up the brush when you need to. If you load up too much, you're going to find it really hard to get a nice clean line. Be really careful about how you hold your paintbrush and how you hold your hand. You don't want your hand to be laying in that yellow paint that you just did. Um, a trick might be to start with the red first. I probably should have thought about that, right, so that my hand wasn't laying on it. You might be able to see that this color is kind of transparent. I can see the white paper coming through, so I'm probably going to give that a second coat eventually. Okay, so we're going to pretend that that is second coat is done, and we're going to go ahead and mix. When I mix yellow and red together, I get orange. So in the square, we're going to go ahead and put our orange. If it helps you, feel free to label these. So you can always write in the colors that you want first, right? So that might help you to make sure that you put them in the right place, okay? So theoretically, to get orange, it should be 50% red and 50% yellow. But I find with pigment, most of the time, you're gonna need to use more of one color than another. So in your palette, let me move this out of the way, right? What you probably wanna do is get yourself a scoop of the yellow, and you can use your palette knife to do this. I did not take all of it. I'm gonna move it in to the center of my palette. And then I'm gonna have to clean up this palette um, for, um, knife. So what I often do is instead of putting it in the water, I just grab another piece of paper towel and I swipe it clean, right? That's probably gonna be clean enough to use. And then let's go ahead and take just a little bit less of the red and we're gonna use the palette knife to swish it around. Now, a lot of people like to use brushes to mix their colors as well. And I do this all the time when I am um, working. But what I find is when I use a brush, right? I'm gonna grab a different one. The brush gets really dirty and then students often forget, okay, I've got this big giant blob of paint on my bristles and then they just go to paint and it's a mess. It's like too much paint and whatnot. So if you're using a brush, make sure that you kind of wipe off as much of the paint in the palette as you can and then rinse it and dry it before you go to use it, okay? So the palette knife is kind of cool because you can use it kind of like a squeegee and you can put this in a pile so like, let's say I can't paint this till tomorrow. As long as I close that lid, this pile will stay good for tomorrow, okay? So what I want you to do is to look at the color that you made and decide, is it orange enough? Is it more yellow orange? Is it more red orange? And if you feel like it needs more of a color, go ahead and go in and add a little bit more and then stir, stir, stir. You wanna stir it so that there's no streaks of color left. So you have to have a little patience with yourself for this, right? And often you get streaks on your palette knife, so I kind of do this little thing 
where I kind of clean it off and then stir, stir, stir. So put your colors in a pile. Try not to spread your mixing out too much, right? And so then we're gonna go ahead and paint our secondary color. So I have a bunch of paint on my um, palette knife and it doesn't have any streaks in it. So I will use it to paint in my color. So load up the two, right? And then paint in your secondary color. So you'll notice that with this square, I'm using a different brush approach here. I'm using the chisel edge of it to kind of pull it down, right? And I'm gonna load up my paintbrush and pull it across. So as long as I use a consistent hand motion, you can see my coffee shakes here. I can get nice straight edges. Okay, once again, that needs a second coat. So let it dry before you do it. I find that if you don't let it dry, what will often happen is it will remain streaky and you're gonna get thick and thin places because paint always wants to go to the thing that's the driest. So a lot of times you actually are erasing some of the color because it will pull off onto your dry brush, right? It will take away some of the paint, okay? So keep the orange in your palette. Do not get rid of it. If you're letting this dry, you could always go back in and do the second coat on top of the red or on top of the yellow, right? To kind of utilize your time. Um, you probably won't have to be like sitting and doing nothing, okay? So I'm not going to jump ahead and do violets or greens yet. I'm gonna finish all of the reds um, and oranges, I should say, because I like to do that because then if I come back tomorrow and something's dry, I don't have to remake it, okay? So let's go ahead and work on our tertiary colors. So we have to put in our red orange and our yellow orange, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of my, I'm gonna take a little bit of my orange and I'm gonna use a little bit of it kind of in two piles. I'll wipe my palette knife. And then to make the yellow orange, I'm gonna go ahead and add more yellow to it. Now, if you use all the paint up like I just did, you can always go back to your um, the setup and get more paint, because you'll need it for the green, right? You'll stir, stir, stir. And notice how yellow orange has more yellow in it than traditional orange, okay? There's really not gonna be a true yellow orange that I want you to mix. You might have a yellow orange that's different than your classmates, but I want you to make sure that it looks like it's in between the two colors that are right here. So it needs to look like it has more yellow in it than the orange that you made. So fill up your bristles like usual, and then you're gonna paint in your triangle. Now notice this is a smaller space, so it's going to give us some good practice on how to paint smaller shapes with this slightly bigger brush. I personally still would not go to the small bristles because you'll find that the small bristles, it's harder to control and harder to make straight lines. Okay, okay so notice the variations in the color. Let's go ahead and make our red orange. Right, clean your bristles, right? Do the same thing. Take some of the orange, right? Don't take all of it, because I still need to do a second layer here. Add a little bit more red and stir, stir, stir. So this is gonna be kind of like a poppy red, right? It's gonna be like a red orange, all right? Keep stirring until it's no streaks. Make sure you have a nice dry brush. Load up your bristles and then paint in with a nice even coat your red orange. So take some time, nice straight edges. If you mess up and you go outside the lines, don't worry about it. You can see me or ask a question about how to correct it later. Okay? So, before I move on to my next set of colors, 
I want to make sure that I add a second coat to all of these paints so that they're not streaky, right? I want it to be nice and flat or as flat as I can get. So at least two coats of each color. I'm not going to demo all of that, but you want to make sure that you do two coats so that you have nice, rich colors where you can't see a lot of the canvas paper coming through. Okay, so once you're done with these colors, you can go ahead and continue. The violet, right, we're actually going to put the blue down here. So our violet is going to go here, and our green is going to go here. Now, if you do these out of order and flip them, it's not going to be a big deal as long as your violets are together and your greens are together. That is okay. So feel free to kind of pre-label this for yourself. You'll notice that I always put the primary color first. Okay. Happy painting.